Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Uh, today we're going to take on the last of Alejandro's reels. This one is a Pacifica 2500. And I have to be the first to say I'm not familiar with this brand. So uh, I'm going to do what a lot of our viewers do. Probably jump in uh, blindsidedly and hope for the best. Right? This is a star drag reel. It's not a lever drag. We have done uh, one of his lever drag reels before. Seems to be a, uh, an aluminum sided single piece frame. Looks like we have two access points, one from each side. This one uh, looks like we have a ball bearing here uh, that will work on it. So overall, it seems like a nice reel. I'm going to have to do some research to find out a little bit more about the company. Right now though, I want to uh, kind of jump in and get started and see what we can find. Now I don't think, just looking at this, it looks like we have a, a side plate that kind of gets embedded here and has a trim ring that uh, is going to enable me to take that off. So it looks like we may or may not need to take the handle off in order to uh, service this reel. But we're going to start there. I believe that everything is going to be mounted on the side plate here and not against the back wall. But uh, I've been known to, to find things differently. This looks like the pen wrench may fit. And it does. How oh, nice. So there's a couple of reels that that pen wrench fits. This one, the uh, Daiwa reel, the old Daiwa reels. And uh, in this case, it uh, looks like it fits here too. A couple of things, I'm wearing a protective glove just to keep the oils and greases off my hand. And I'm using a uh, parts tray to put all the pieces and parts that I take off the reel. Finally, this is a new endeavor for me. I've never had one of these opened. And so I am taking pictures. Now I'm doing it on a video here. and. Uh, don't be afraid to take pictures, whether it's using a video camera or whether it's using a, a standard digital camera, your cell phone, whatever. But it, when you get to critical junctures, take pictures because if you get stuck along the way, you'll have a reference point, particularly if you can't find the schematic for the reel. So uh, I'm not being that bold as to say I'm going to rely on my memory. That uh, doesn't always work. Speaking of being bold, thank you to all of the folks that are uh, on the front lines during this pandemic whether you're a first responder, medical, uh, EMTs, law enforcement, teachers, uh, supply chain involving truckers and food stores, retailers during this holiday season trying to keep open to enable us to try and make the holiday season somewhat uh, normal. Thank you to all of those for everything it is that you're doing and for quite honestly putting your, your lives at risk to, to help save ours and others really is appreciated. All right, so I've left the star adjuster on. I'm taking the four screws out. And these are somewhat unusual because most of the time you'll find the side plate screw has a Phillips head. Well, this one doesn't. This one has a, uh, a single slotted screw. And I'm noticing that there is a good amount of corrosion or salt buildup on this, even though the reel appears to be clean. So this might be one of those cases where the reel is hosed down a lot, but the uh, uh, internals may, may be gummed up a little bit. So Alejandro asked me to make sure that the reel was serviced and cleaned and getting ready for the fishing season again. And uh, that's what we're doing. All right, I've taken those four screws out. I want to see if this just com comes off or if we may have another trick here. I guess the first trick is take the, the side, side plate off. And it looks like that should just come out now. Well, when it does, so there you go. All right, so we have a ball bearing on the back. I had mentioned that adjuster on the back side. We have a ball bearing on the spool. We have an internal structure here that looks very much like a pen wheel. So uh, we're, we're going to get underneath that. The one that's always interesting about these reels, of course, is that anti-reverse dog. Kind of looking through here, it's on this post here. So there's a chance that that is mounted with a spring that uh, may or may not be incorporated into it. So we'll get to that in a moment. Like the other two reels, this grease is, is uh, fairly dried up. So we're going to make sure we get that cleaned as part of this surface. All right, there's a, a bearing here. I'm just going to oil the bearing. And just grab my paper towel and make sure that the rest of the spool is clean, both sides. Doesn't appear to be any buildup of, of 
contaminants or anything. And that, uh, you can put a, a drop of oil onto the click mechanism. And we can close the side of the wheel up. Easy enough. There you go. That side of the wheel is done. I don't need to put that into my parts tray. I'm going to leave that uh, just in front of me there. All right. This is the, uh, the works, if you will. Just uh, when I don't know what the wheel is, I generally like to get to this point and at least see what's going on underneath there. So we'll check the, the eccentric and the spring is fine. This looks very much like a Penn Jig Masters jack. And I'm thinking that the internal design won't be that much different. I have a large main gear, uh, bridge, four bridge screws. I can see the anti-reverse through here. It's, it's not going to show on the camera, but I'm just taking a look to make sure that I understand how that's going. And uh, ready to dive in. So we're going to start by taking off the star adjuster and the little shim cap. Put those into my parts tray. Now I have four screws. So let's take those off. It's not necessary to remove that uh, eccentric lever. And just like a pen wheel, which also has four bridge screws, you can kind of feel when they disconnect. And I am cupping my hand behind this because I'm unsure of that anti-reverse setup there. So I want to make certain that uh, if anything shoots, it shoots into my hand right now. I had a, uh, a Follow one of our uh, viewers say, you know, when, when you're unsure of something like this, put it into a put it into a baggie, and that way, if it explodes, the parts get trapped in the baggie. Well, good idea. Uh, in two minutes, I may tell you that I should have done that. Okay, this assembly is free now. And boy, if I'm not looking at a pen jig master bridge, I don't, I don't know what to say. It almost looks identical to a pen jig master bridge. Pretty interesting. Okay. The dog is incorporated on a, uh, on a post, and the spring is right there, so that's all good news. We're just going to remove this assembly here, make sure that we get everything cleaned up. Pull this main gear up here. I'm not quite sure what the grease is. I'm going to keep the sequence here. I'm going to think that that sequence should be the same. We've got hard washers. Our drive material is some kind of a, uh, a hard washer. It almost feels like a rubber. Uh, we're going to go with that. I'm not sure what that is. We're going to clean up the cavity of that main gear. We're going to use some steel wool to wipe out the, the uh, accumulated area. Is there some kind of stuff in here? It's hard to say what it is. Probably just some dried salts. Then I'm going to use my bridge. I'm going to just get that off to the side. I'm going to get my paper towel out here and my brass brush, which is a it's an oxymoron. It's a hard, soft bristle. I'm just going to clean all that old grease out of the, the main gear here. We're going to come over here just like we would a jig master and we're going to pull the pin on this bridge sleeve. I'm, I'm really surprised how much this, this reel re reminds me of the pens. You got to pull that pin out and so I'm using this as a punch to push the pin through. This is a soft metal hammer. It's got a little plastic head on it. And then that eventually will get it to the point where you can grip this with a pliers. And be careful, you don't want to screw up the, the points of those. So just be, be a little bit careful here because if you go to reinstall 
and, and you've kind of buggered that up, it becomes a little bit more difficult to put it back in. That's why I want to take it out. I remember exactly which piece or which side of that piece came out. All right, then we can pull the shaft off. I just heard the dog hit the floor here. Yes, that does happen. So when the dogs hit the floor, I stop action. So that's what we just did there. We stopped the action. And again, this is so similar to a pen that it's almost scary. I'm going to really have to do my research here to find out what, uh, who makes this. But the, uh, the bridge is straightforward. It has uh, two oil points. I want to make sure that those grooves are cleared out of there. Um, I don't know what this blue grease is. And it is a little bit, I don't know if chalky is the right word, but it's, uh, it's got a certain characteristic to it, which to me says clear it out. Okay, so I've cleaned out the inside. I've cleaned the main shaft. You can see that this doesn't uh, feel right for some reason. All right. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. Why not? It looks like a pen. No, I'm using it because the uh, because it's fishing reel grease, not because it's pen or it looks like pen. And we're going to take that pin and we're going to put that pin right back in. Now this channel lock pliers, you see me use that a lot. It, it has variability to it. And I like to use that channel lock pliers to pull that pin in as opposed to, to hitting. Just a little bit better. Make sure you clear the ridge here when you go do that. And now we got that dog. So that dog mounts just like it would on a uh, on a pen reel over the post. Probably a little difficult for you to see this. The piece goes over the post, and then that spring compresses behind and grabs the little tab. arm of the dog. So that's the, the anti-reverse dog and if you kind of turn you'll see it working just the way it should. All right there's a hard washer here that I didn't bother to take off. I'm going to clean the back of this. We've already cleaned the tracks of the, the gear so let's get some grease in there. And you don't have to get it in every tooth. Just get it so that it's sufficient to spread as the as the wheel turns. Okay, that little bridge that I was telling you about getting it past, we're not past there. And these tolerances get pretty tight, so. Alright, three hard washers. Hard washers generally do not need any kind of lubrication. They're generally petro, uh, petrochemical type products. These are not fabric. These are like almost like a plastic. So that's where we're going. You have a uh, hard washer. You have two keyed washers and an eared washer. As I mentioned, if you're familiar with the pen setup, this is almost identical. Second of the uh, hard washers, then we go to the eared washer last of the uh, hard washers. Last of that, and you know, this was on the outside, but I believe this belongs on the inside, so I'm going to put it there. Just because that's generally where the tensioner belongs. And uh, if it doesn't work, we'll come back out and uh, disassemble and reassemble. Here is the uh, setup for the back end of the plate. A little bit different. It's got a ball bearing in it. It does have the two springs, the yoke, the, uh, the pinion gear and a, uh, and a jack. So let's go ahead and take this off. You do that by pushing down on the pinion gear and then you should be able to slide off the jack. Then your yoke and gear come out and then you have the two springs. And in this case we have a ball bearing uh, in the back. You want to make sure that the, the 
the uh, inside of the side plate is clean, it is. I can just get those springs out of here. Save myself uh, another trip around the, the basement floor here. So a lot of folks wonder what's underneath here that you can find it. I have a, um, a hard plastic mat like you would see in, a, uh, in an office for a uh, rolling chair. And I like it because things don't get trapped in it. And when something falls, you can hear it. And that's actually what happened with that dog there. I heard it. I didn't see it. But uh, it kind of gave me the alert that that stuff was out there. And I better go find it. So uh, there you go. All right. Yeah, just cleaning off the old grease there. So I don't know. This might be some kind of a molly grease or that. I just, I just don't know. I, I don't see this type of a grease in fishing reels, but that doesn't mean it's not a fishing reel grease. It's just one I'm unfamiliar with. And it may have come from the plant this way, or it may have been a result of a service at one point. Okay, so the pinion gear is good. I've checked all the teeth, the alignment of the teeth. They're all in good condition. So it's just time to reinstall this thing. A little bit of grease on both shoulders of the, uh, the yoke. Gear goes in next. We get a good amount of grease onto that gear. So this is, I guess, a commercial for don't be afraid to open up a reel because you haven't done it before. Just be cautious. And I think the, the word of caution here was the, you're never quite sure what that anti-reverse setup is going to be. The rest you can pretty much figure out. But the uh, anti-reverses, you're never quite sure. So just take your time. Be cautious, take lots of pictures, and generally you can uh, you can think your way through these. Okay, I've still got that pressed down. I now have the, uh, the jack assembly over the yoke. Now we can go mount the bridge by inserting. We don't have to worry too much about that uh, anti-reverse because it's set up that way. So now I'm just looking for that centering pin to pull the pinion gear in. There's two little points or studs that this needs to sit on. You just heard them snap in place. And interestingly enough, none of those screws came out. So let's just go tighten them up. So overall, a very simple reel. It looks like it's a, probably a 4 to 1 gear ratio maybe. Maybe a little bit higher. Uh, looks like it's solid in performance. It's an interesting uh, case and side plate. It's something I haven't dealt with before, but that doesn't mean it's not a good or a bad one. It just means I haven't dealt with it. Here's our uh, sleeve. There's a little bit of stuff in there, so I'm just going to use my penetrating oil and a Q-tip to clean that up. It's just that old grease again. Now, if we didn't service this reel the way we did, we would put oil into that at the moment. Okay, looks like we can go ahead and put this back together. I think we can probably have to be up top like that in order to get this ring on, the trim ring. Slide it in underneath and then it'll hold it to one side. Find the indents now to press this in. I got a little bit of something on these screws here, so I'm going to go ahead and just give that a quick shot of oil. So that maybe in the future, if that was salt or something, it doesn't get stuck. Like I'm short one screw, and that's the beauty of a parts tray. You can find it right there. These look like they're stainless screws, so that's that's all good. As I mentioned, there was some uh, some accumulation of something on the tracks of the screws. All right, I like to do this north, south, east, west kind of an approach here. Let's get the top one in. Or bottom, kind of south, if you will. Here 
and we can go east and west. So if anybody knows anything about this reel, if you can fill me in on it, who's a manufacturer, country manufacturer even, I don't see a country manufacturer on this. I'll look at this reel seat in a moment. But I don't know enough about it. It's a Pacifica. It's a nice, uh, nice reel. So the design is internally kind of looks like a pen. Nothing else looks like a pen, but the internal workings of this reel certainly do. Okay, one more to go. So if you know about that, if you know the price points, if you know who the manufacturer is, all of that stuff will help us all learn so that the next time we see one we can uh, say, I know that reel. Now I can say I know the reel because I've worked on it. Uh, no country manufacturer underneath. All right. Sleeve on. We had another one of these. So I'm thinking maybe I only thought there was one. There was really two. One is a cap washer as we did it. I'm betting this is upside down because you would want you would want the hooks the way you're going to grab them. Let's see, this is where a picture would help, but this makes the sense in terms of having the, the hook for you to grab to, to turn that. Let's get the handle back on. Get the handle nut back on. And just a quick look into my parts tray says that this reel is complete with the exception of the tie-down screw for the handle nut. Now before you tighten that nut down, tighten your drag down. That way you don't trap the, the star adjuster when you're uh, screw, screwing down the handle. We can put that little... Uh, that screw in. Even the fact that the handle screw fits that pen wrench makes it kind of interesting. There's not too many things standardized in the industry. All right, let's give it a spin. All right, there you go. Let's give it this. Oh, that's smooth again. There you go, Alejandro. Look at that, huh? That guy's spinning like a charm. All right, make sure that the Drag is tight, and then if you're going to store your reel, back the drag off after you service it. You don't need to, to keep pressure onto those. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like this. If you have any questions on this reel, if you have any additional information on who makes this reel, or if you have a question on any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, uh, maybe I can help get you unstuck. Just shoot me a note uh, in the comment section. If you like this kind of a video, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way uh, you'll see all of the videos I post. And I post frequently, so uh, don't, you don't want to miss any if this is something that you enjoy. And finally, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired or serviced, um, well, I do that too. I do that by mail. And if you contact me using the email on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with that repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.